I think Bitcoin is a better goal than gold. You can move it at the speed of light. You can see with the Lightning Network evolving, that pretty soon we'll have a billion people able to able to move any block of Bitcoin anywhere friction free. And so Bitcoin is uh, digital money for the 21st century. Gold was metallic money for the 19th century. So I just think if you believe in sound money, then you should do yourself a service and you ought to sell your gold and you ought to buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin is sound money for the 21st century and gold was sound money for the 19th century. It's just that simple. You got to take a four year or longer time horizon. Bitcoin is outperforming everything in two, four, six, eight and 10 years. It's just that simple. What you want to do is get rich slowly, not get rich quick. And that means that the time-tested technique for investment is you, is you buy high-quality, scarce, desirable property and you hold it forever. And uh, you just got to figure out what is scarce and desirable and high-quality. I don't hate on the gold people. I wish they wouldn't hate on me. It's not I don't get the idea. The point I'm trying to make is you want to you wanna give music to a billion people, give them free digital music. And if you want to give money to a billion people, give them digital money. And if you want to give education to a billion people, give them digital education and i love the the steinway piano and i love a bar of a gold watch you know and i love mit in the classroom <laughs> but you gotta go forward you can't go back if you want to make the All world right. a better place if anybody looks at what i've said consistently since september of 2020 <laughs> what i've said is is bitcoin is scarce desirable property and i intend to hold it forever for the rest of my life, I'm not a speculator. And what I've also said is, if you're in a collapsing currency environment, you should have negative working capital. You're better off to have debt than to have equity. And what's happened in the past two years is currencies have collapsed. You were better to have debt than equity. When I told people that I like mortgages, the mortgage rate was 2.7%. Mortgage rates nearly doubled, and if you and if you had a chance to take a mortgage at 2.8 percent, and you waited till the mortgage rates went to 5.2 percent, the cost of your home just went up by 80 percent. So paying off your home with cash is probably not a good idea when mortgage rates are cheap. Holding cash that's losing 20 percent of its value is not a good idea. That. The blue dollar rate is 300 pesos to the dollar. I keep pointing this out. So, so I think what people, uh, some people just want to find something skeptical or critical to say. But, but telling people that they ought to buy desirable things and take cheap money to do it and hold it forever is simply the way that you preserve generational wealth. And it's worked that way for a long, long time. It still works that way. So you know, I don't apologize for saying I like cheap mortgages and I don't apologize for saying people should buy Bitcoin. Everybody can decide how much Bitcoin they want to buy versus how much land versus how much art versus how much whatever else they want to own. Two years ago, Bitcoin was $10,000 a coin. And since I started, gold is down 15% and Bitcoin is up 100%. So for everyone that has the time horizon more than two years, your choice is lose 15% of your money or double your money. And if you have a time horizon of less than two years, you can't reasonably think of yourself as an investor. You're just a trader or a speculator. If you always adjust it to be less than two years or less than a year, then you're always a speculator, right? If you're an investor, you're taking a four-year time horizon or a 10-year time horizon or a 30-year time horizon. So it's much more, and, you know, I'll any speak advice to you're giving to someone for t for two months is just trading advice. And I don't I, give anybody I mean, trading I can advice. Say, you know We've been in a recession since March of 2020. <laughs> if, if, you, if you calculated or if you estimated the economy based upon real output and then you adjusted it for the strength of the currency, if the currency loses 20% of its purchasing power and the economy is flat, then you contracted the economy by 20%. So the currency's lost 40% of its purchasing power in the past two years. If the economy grew 5%, you're down 35%. So yeah, we're in a recession, but you know, I'm not a macroeconomist and I don't I don't really care to engage in the debate about what is the definition of a recession or not. Right? It's above my pay grade. The dollar is the strongest medium of exchange in the world, and so it is strengthening against other currencies, but the currencies are the are the weakest 
store of value. The foreign currencies are weak store of asset, value assets. So, so foreign currencies are collapsing. South American currencies, African currency, Sri Lankan currency, you know, Middle Eastern, you know, well, Turkish currency, Lebanese currency, Russian, Ukrainian currencies. Russia, I guess, doing better because they're tied to commodities. But I think that uh, that you've got a, ba a basket of strong currencies that be pegged to the dollar, and they're losing 15% of their value or more a year against scarce assets. And then you've got weak currencies that are losing 15% of their value against the dollar, right? If we look, uh, you know, South uh, the South African Kruger Rand, the Korean won, the Great British Pound, the Euro, they're all down 11 to 13 percent. Polish is down 16 percent. The yen's down 18 percent over the course of about a year. So they're collapsing against the dollar. And then the developing markets are collapsing 40 percent against the dollar. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know. But I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiplied with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.